All right, so I'm going to teach you proper percentages, which are going to give you, these percentages are going to give you the ability to determine what's the likelihood that this move to a new high is the 28% that's going to follow through versus this is one of the ones that are going to fail. So we need, in order for me to bring you to that ability, to create that ability in you to be able to say, that's one of the 28% that's going to keep going. Now, this is one of the 72% that's going to fail. In order for me to get you there, we have to first understand our percentages. Okay, so let's go. The first percentage I want you to understand is 33%. Now, what does this mean? This means that if we have a move to the upside, boom, and the pullback that creates the top is only a 33% or less pullback, top third, that's 33%, middle third, and bottom third. If your pullback stays in the top 33% of the strong move to the upside, this is likely to be one of the 28% that keeps going and going and going. All right? If you have this strong run-up, let's take the next percentage. Okay, and you pull back, and this pullback, it passes the third mark, but it doesn't pass the 50% mark. This has odds of being one of the 28% that will keep going. So the first two percentages in terms of pullbacks, in terms of the stock rallies and then starts dropping again. If the drop is milder than the rally by one third, and then we break to a new high, that new high is likely to keep going. If the stock runs up in the second scenario, pulls back a little deeper than 33%, but does not really exceed the halfway mark, that still kind of falls into the 28% camp of breakouts to, to new highs that can keep going. But the second two, maybe not. Let's take a look. So the next percentage is our 66% mark, right? Stock rallies. We drop past the 33%. We pass the 50% and we drop into the 60%. 6% zone. Now, when this attempts to rally, if this manages to break that high right there, boom, that's likely to fail. That deeper than normal pullback has already run a freaking marathon before getting to the breakout point. You see, by the time this stock comes from 66%, runs past 50%, runs past 33%, by the time he gets to the new high, this stock is like this. <sighs> Boss, did I run well enough? <sighs> you see what I'm saying? And this suckers so many traders in because alerts go off across the entire world, traders. Alerts, oh, WXYZ, new high. Alerts go off across all trading desks all around the world. And a lot of times traders are just automatic buyers of new highs. Now, this piling in at this tired point is what creates the possibility of a violent reversal back to the downside because as this tips back below the new high point, everyone who piled in here is a loser. 
And what do losers do? They start piling out, applying even more pressure. The deeper this drops, the more they're, lo they're losers. And so they join the other side to become sellers, okay? Adding additional sell pressure onto the failed new high. And when you know that this is happening, you can actually turn this failure into money in the markets, all right? But you have to understand these percentages first, okay? So by coming back from a deeper than normal pullback, by the time the stock reaches the new high point, it's already spent. It's almost like a gun that's already used most of its ammunition to get there or a marathon runner who's run a marathon and the traders that don't know that the stock has already run a marathon are jumping on board and betting that the stock is able to run another marathon. Now imagine how terrible a marathon runner is going to be after running 27 miles first as a warm up to run a 27 mile marathon. Not gonna happen. All right, and this is what you're dealing with with a 66% pullback that moves to a new high. It's going to fail, all right, most of the time. Now, everything, I have to say this, everything I teach you is never can be 100%, all right? You're going to find 66% pullbacks that keep going. I'm not talking about something that's perfect. We can't find that. But eight times out of every 10, you're going to be right with this, okay? And that's all you need to make a living in this market, it's finding things that are seven to eight times out of 10 right, controlling the times that they're not right to small losses, and just repeat them over and over again. The rest becomes a numbers game, okay? All right. Now, I've got to cover the 100% scenario, which is, no, this is, which is very similar to the 66%. So in the 100% scenario, right, what happens is that you pass the 33%, you pass the 50%, you even pass the 66%, and you come all the way back to the beginning of the whole move. You see? All, past the 66%, you come all the way back to the beginning. You retrace the whole movement. So let me, let's make a clean version of this 100%. We're covering the 100% version now. So we've rallied, we pull back, we've passed the 33, we took the 33 out, we've passed the half, we've taken the half out, okay? We've even passed the 66%, we've taken the 66% out, and we've gone all the way back to the origin area of the initial move to the upside. This is your origin area. That's a 100% retracement. If this manages to turn and be strong enough to get all the way back, I am telling you, eight to nine times out of 10 in this case, that's a powerful failure. If the stock is tired by the time it gets to a new high after a 66% retracement, imagine how tired it is after a 100% retracement. Now, as I mentioned, there's a special video on this event right here, all right? The trap play. That's what I believe the video is called, the trap play. All right, I'll make sure I have um, a tag in this in the recording version of this so you can easily click on it and, and go to that if you want a deep dive into how to profit from this failure i just don't want you buying it first all right the next step is well uh, the next step after you get used to seeing this happen over and over again the next step is to go to a place where this becomes one of the tactics you play the fail trap new high the trap the new high that is a trap for traders that do not know what I'm teaching you here today, All right? Because this is a very reliable trading tactic here to play this to the downside. And so there are our percentages, guys, 33%, 50%, 66%.
66%, and 100. These can produce new highs and new lows. These will typically be your traps, be the 72% be the that fail. These will be the 28% that work, typically. All right? So I hope that makes sense. hope that makes sense, guys. Let's go to some charts, all right? And I'm going to show you how this concept works in real time using today's data, all right? All right, so let's do that. Can we do this with Apple? That's the first thing we're looking at here. Yes, we can. All right, so look. Remember, don't forget what we're talking about. We're talking about this, move up, and then we're going to do our divisions, right? And we're going to see on a strong move up, does it do this? Does it do that? Does it do this? Okay, these different levels, right? So here we go. Look at this move up. Look at this move from this low here. Boom. Now, it starts pulling back. You see that pullback? What percentage is that? What percentage did it maintain? Here's your halfway, all right? Here's your 66%, right? Here's your 100, and here's your third, 33%. Boo! <laughs> I'm sorry if you guys have cats nearby or whatever. I know they just jumped or what have you, but boo! Gotta love it. I love it. All right. So you see that this pullback, this is the strong move I was talking about, all right? This was the strong move. Now, here, if you look at this, look, look. Now, let's take this move itself. Move up. Now, let's break it up. You see that? We drop. Boom! <laughs> you got the new high. Because the, the dip, the pullback, didn't break into the lower levels. Okay, now what I want to show you something, I'm going to show you this on the reverse side now. Let's take a look at the reverse side here. Look at this move up this morning. This is this morning. Look at this is the 18th. Okay, now look at this move this morning. We move up. Now do your divisions. We break through the 33%. We break through the 50%. We break through the 66% and we get all the way back to the origin of the move, okay? Now, this is not likely to make a new high. It got far, though, but then failed, okay? But not so fast. Let's go over this. This is very powerful, guys. This is very powerful. So check this out. This move all the way back down, remember, this is that red movement I drew, I drew for you on the slide, you see? Now, we're going to take that, and we're going to divide that into the divisions, right? Now, look at this, guys. Check this out. If we rally here, we're likely to drop. If we rally to here, we're also likely to drop to new lows. But if we get all the way back to this, the 66%, the we're likely to drop, but then go higher. You understand? All right? Because we got to the 66% level. Now, check this out. All right? So here is that red movement down. All right, here's that red movement down. Now let's, let's, let's do our divisions. You should be able to do this in your mind. You don't have to draw on the chart. If drawing on the chart helps you, that's fine. But this move up got, see, if it moved here and failed, we're going to new lows likely, right? But it didn't do that. If we move to here, all right, we got all the way to there. We got to there. Well, it actually kind of partially failed here. But we got all the way back 
not all the way to the top, but now the next failure or the next drop should not go all the way down. We should, we should, we should react off one of these levels. Boom. To the upside again. So what I'm trying to show you is that you can move from one angle down to an up angle up. So we were first measuring this drop. But depending upon how far the rally gets, we might have to flip that to green. This got so deep into the red that now we give this the benefit of the doubt and we start splitting this up into the appropriate levels. Boom. Okay. And this move now becomes the new move that you must break up. It's going to take a while for you to get used to doing this. So we break through all of these levels, which means that this next rally is likely to do what? Fail somewhere before the peak again. All right. And so this is how you take this percentage concept and come up with potential probabilities, all right? So I see them all over the place. Look at this. I always look for the beginning of a move. So here's the beginning of a move down, right? Now I want the down I want the move to be sharp and hard not just a gradual move it has to be sharp and hard then if I break this up into the percentages look at where we bounce to and I'm like we're going to new lows boom All right and that's the concept, guys. That's the concept. I'm going to take a look at one more here. I'm just looking at the things that I like to, to trade in the morning here. Ah, here's something interesting. Look at this strong move up this morning. This is this morning. So here's the origin of the move. Boom! That's a powerful move this morning. All right? Now we got to break this up. We, we largely stay in the top third. Do you see that? I mean, this little blip, we can, we can ignore that. That's a little, little overshoot. But boom, we're likely to go to new highs. This is that 28% of the time you're going higher because the stock can't get past that top third of the power move. All right? Very fascinating. Now, if we look at this move, take a look here let me go here so from this sideways I would say the origin of this move is here all right we're gonna take that big move and divide it into its pieces you know we're dropping here we rally, but we fail here, all right? We fail to make a new high, which is fine. And this comes into another concept. This is called the midday doldrum period, guys. And your failures are higher in the midday doldrum period, all the way to basically 2.30 Eastern or so, um, what have you. But anyway, okay. So, guys, I am telling you that, first of all, you should be you should be reviewing this over and over again i want you to try to repeat this session at least four times you don't have to do them back to back four times 
you 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 try to go out into the markets and if you, you just you start seeing them and then you stop seeing them and things get a little confusing boom you come back to this session all right then you 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 repeat the session again, then you go back into the real world, you search for them, you take snapshots of them, you look for them, you try to see them live, you try to see them in the past. If things start getting cloudy again, you come back to the session. And each time you come back, I promise you, the light bulb is just gonna get brighter and brighter and brighter. This is a simple but powerful concept. <laughs>